It is Saturday. What's today? The 25th, right? It is. The day after our anniversary? <laughs> yes. So we've got some visitors coming onto the farm here today from out of town. We're out here on the pasture because we have our broiler chickens. I think we had a pretty good shot of just how crazy it is trying to get all 149 of those baby nuggets fed. And we need to definitely separate them in, out into two tractors. So we're gonna be doing that here this morning. In addition, we need to flip flop the hens and the turkeys. The turkeys are getting way too cramped and we have one turkey that has just kind of been beat up on. She's got a like a little something on her eye and you know how that is with poultry, they go right after that. So we've had her kind of segregated out and she's not happy. So we're hoping that giving them some more space and getting those turkeys some space to spread out will help that from continuing. Before we do that, a couple quick things. First one is we will have live, live stream next Saturday. Yes. Hopefully we'll have the pigs yes. before that. And we also have a poll. If you guys are not familiar with community tabs on YouTube, if you check out the community tab from our main YouTube channel page, you'll see that we have two polls up there. YouTube only allowed us to do five options for each poll, but we have a poll up there for naming the pig hutch. Yes. You guys had some fantastic suggestions, so we wanna make sure that you guys get on there and get a chance to allow your voice to be heard. So check out the community <laughs> tab, vote on that poll. That way you guys decide what it's called. Yep. All right, I know you got a bum knee, but uh, we need to get to work. Okay. You ready? Yep, let's Good. do it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Go on. Come on, let's go, Red. All right, so we have the turkeys in their new area, and for the most part, they're kind of just clumped up, but we did see them up on these kind of roost bars we have. They haven't found the food and water yet, so we're gonna definitely help them with that, but we need to get to our broiler chickens, and the plan that Lori and I have for that may not work. We're gonna have to see. Okay, so sometimes I come up with brilliant ideas. Yeah. What was this one? This one is us moving the nuggets to the other side of the pasture and then so, splitting them into... So from there to, to there. there. That's about 100 feet. Yes, and getting the other tractor over there. Because we need the other tractor for them to be in. We need to split them up, yep. Right, and they won't... We crush them if we try to pull the tractors when they're this small. Right? And there's just too many in there to try to move them with the tractor because, yeah, they kind of get run over. And so we are going to just lift the tractor off of them. Yes and then hope they start moving that way. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we have our, our pig sorting boards that we can kind of guide them hopefully that way into the tractors. Yes, so we're about to unleash 149 <laughs> baby nuggets yeah. onto the pasture with the hopes that they will get into in single file <laughs> go from there <laughs> to there and automatically split up. 75 in one and 74 in the other. That's gonna happen, yeah. All right, we're okay. on it. <laughs> Go.
Alright, how many do we have? Oh, they're all going all the way back. <laughs> I can't even count them! Let's go. Let's go. Shippers themselves, what do you think I get for? Come on, Nuggets. Come on, Nuggets. You'll recognize home in just a second. Okay. There you go. Good. Okay. One, group one. <laughs> so, um, how was that? <laughs> that was fun. That, that was fun, yeah. That, that was herding chickens right there. <laughs> kind of like herding cats, minus some jumping. And we think we have 75 in that first tractor and 74 in this other tractor. They're doing really, really good right now because um, the weather's nice, but we do have rain coming in, so we have a couple more things we need to try to finish up on these tractors before we have our visitors here. So we're going to go ahead and get to work. Hey guys, just want to give you a glimpse of the projects that I was working on this week. Dwayne and I got the pig enclosure done this weekend, and we did get all the clips around the top part of the pig paneling. We just didn't do the bottom part, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that today. But we just used the T-post clips, and really easy to use. You just put it around the T-post, and they do have tools that you can actually um, pull that with, but we just use these and just pull up the sides. And then that just locks it in place. We do also put some tie wire on each of the panels in the corner here that connect them together. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that as well. Doesn't need to be much. Just kind of twist it. And I do just fold down the part that is pokey so that it doesn't get anybody. This is one of our fig trees back here and we don't know exactly what variety it is. We got it from Reed. We're calling it the RSI White. He had gotten, I believe it was some cuttings from someone he knew who did not know what variety of tree it was. I did actually cover a bunch of these figs on Friday and this weekend we never got a chance to come back here and check them. I'm gonna go through and try to get a harvest of ones that are ready and then also cover some more. So I was able to get a handful of these figs harvests that are ripe. Some of them might be a little overripe, but that's the fig right there. When Dwayne gets home, we'll do a little taste test to see how they taste. We got these three beds planted out this weekend and I need to get the bird netting put on them so we don't lose any of them when they start sprouting. The first bed, I do have the netting still from the previous season that I'll be able to just lower and secure it. The other two beds, the netting did get ruined, so I need to get more netting for those two. Instead of cutting more right now, I'm gonna try to salvage the netting from the beds that we have over here with the cow peas and sweet potatoes. We did make the mistake of letting the cow peas grow up into the netting, so I'll show you how they got all entangled in there. So I don't know if it's gonna be worth trying to save the netting or not. I'm gonna work with this first bed first because there's not as many on here. I'll see how hard it is to get the vines out of the netting and move it. If it's too difficult, then I will just cut some more. out here at the cow peas doing another harvest. We've been harvesting the cow pea pods for the last couple weeks and we have already gotten over eight cups of beans so far. I am also harvesting some of the green bean stage of these cow peas as well and I'm going to attempt to cook them tonight with dinner. We haven't tried them yet. Dwayne did try them raw and they didn't taste so good if you can remember. It is Thursday and we had moved these small nuggets into this tractor this past weekend, which we need to move them again 
get them off of this ground. They've been on this ground a little too long. I've put down a lot of manure in this area. I've actually been bringing greens into them since they ate all the greens that were in here to begin with. I had had some scraps that we've been giving them. They've been doing really good with eating the greens that I bring in. And it's pretty cool to watch them just attack it. I gave them some broccoli yesterday and they completely ate the entire top of this. So the turkeys like their treats too. One thing about them, if I put their scraps on the ground, they tend to just walk over it. So they're a little spoiled. Like to be hand fed. So this is cucumber, which they love. They also um, really like zucchini. But then I've got to share with the hens too. So when they come over here, come over here, Red. Come here, over here. Let's give some to Red out here, see if she'll eat it. Here, Red. With the turkeys getting so big, we want to be able to move them into the bigger run. So what we need to do is in the coop here, we have the round roosting bars, which we want to switch out to just a two by four. So it's a flat roosting bar for the turkeys. I have the hens in here right now, which they actually roost up here on this ledge. So they don't even go on these bars right now. So I'm gonna try to get these switched out so that when we do get the turkeys in here, it's already ready to go for them. Just assume that the two by four that I bought would fit in here and I wouldn't have to cut it, but um, it doesn't. So I'm gonna need to cut it down. So I think what I'm gonna do is just measure the bar that I took out of here and make the two by four the same length as that one. fits in here. Um, I am going to attempt to do some pilot holes first before I just try to put the screws in so I don't split the wood. Dwayne normally does all this so I don't know if I've ever even drilled a pilot hole before so we're gonna try it. I got that one in and I'm gonna go ahead and cut the second one and get that one put in as well. All right, I got those both in here and this one is kind of right above one of our nesting boxes and right up against this one, but I am still able to pull the nesting box out to clean it. But the reason I did that is because I wanted enough distance between them this way and not have this one too close to being underneath of it because the turkeys are so much bigger. I need to do something different with the nesting boxes. I can always do that. So now these are ready for the turkeys. All right, so we're back here at the RSI white fig. I was hoping that I'd be able to get a harvest and a taste testing for you guys, but we're getting a lot of bird and bug damage, a lot of bugs in those right now. So unfortunately, not gonna be able to show you guys that. All I can tell you is once we do give you guys an update on that, they're very, very sweet. Much sweeter than the brown turkey figs. I would say they're even closer to the panache, but they don't taste like that. They're more like a honey type fig. But what I do wanna do, we've got visitors here today from out of state, and I wanted to introduce them to you guys. We have Danny and Catherine, and they are from Plentiful Harvest Homestead. We wanted to introduce you to these guys because they're gonna be moving out to Arizona So they've got a lot of questions for us and I think maybe some questions that you guys might have so So tell us a little bit about you. You guys are out here looking at Arizona. What's going on? Yeah, yeah, I have visited uh, Arizona since March about uh, s Seven times and just looking at land and a possible place for a homestead 
Uh, we have a vision and a dream for restorative agriculture. We couldn't think of better people to meet than yourselves <laughs> and just a wonderful opportunity and a, and a privilege to see you. And uh, we're very excited about our future. Very here good. in Arizona. So now are you looking at a specific area of Arizona? Or? Yeah, so probably uh, Highland Desert, southeast uh, Arizona, down in, near, down in Cochise County. How much land are you guys looking at? Do you guys, have you settled on that yet or? Not really, you know, uh, I think uh, five to 10 acres seems pretty good, uh, pretty good to us at this point. Very good, and then what's your goal? So homestead obviously, so mm -hmm. animals and plants and all that kind of great stuff. Sure, yeah. yeah, for about eight years we've been raising heritage breed rabbits. We have American chinchillas and French angoras of those, and we have some little Coturnix quail, and every once in a while we have chickens for a while, and mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so those are the animals that we've enjoyed so far, but we, you know, we like animals. <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> so. love animals, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And just to be able to, to uh, cr you know, create some fruitful things and be a blessing to the community. That's what we want to do. Well, I really like the design of how the, you know, the rabbit manure feeds the garden and the garden feeds the rabbits. We really like how that design is set up and um, just see the beauty in that um, cycle that God has set up for that. So. What do we do to plan effectively when we start for five, to prepare five to ten acres for farming? That's, so that's a really good, complicated question. <laughs> so uh, definitely probably have that. A lot of you guys asking the same, and I, I, I want to give a detailed answer to you guys, but kind of just generally speaking, especially out here in Arizona, you know, besides the obvious things is land, water is critical for us here in the desert. It doesn't fall from the sky like it does most places. Mm -hmm. And then how you move that water on the land. So there, that, there's a lot of things involved with that. But when you're looking at land, I think the biggest thing is deciding what you want to do with it. So, you know, mm -hmm. do you want to have a small garden? Do you want to have a massive orchard? Do you want to have 20 or 30 cattle? Mm -hmm. You know, deciding what you want will kind of steer you towards the amount of land, number one, and then what kind of land can you look for and deal with. Mm -hmm. So if, right. you're, if you're raising cattle, you know, you're going to want flat land. Mm -hmm. And maybe if you can get some taller vegetation, natural mesquite trees and things like that mm -hmm. are good mm -hmm. but you definitely want flat land um, for most things out here you're going to find flat land mm -hmm. <laughs> not a lot of mountains mm -hmm. but uh, we have a lot of washes um, through mm -hmm. most of arizona and then the water table varies quite a bit so mm -hmm. you know water is essential for life mm -hmm. and out here determining what you're going to need to do for water is critical what you want to produce will help you determine the amount of land that you need mm -hmm. and then access to water probably the most critical things that I would start with. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what we did here. But those are probably the biggest things um, as you're looking. And that's kind of the, the first focus, I would say. For you guys. Very good. It actually is beautiful in the shade, which is very strange for us <laughs> because it's fall. It's actually fall. Want to make sure before I forget, next week we have our monthly live stream with you guys, which is at three o'clock Arizona time. So we'd love it if you guys would join us for that. Um, don't forget to vote for the pig hutch, what you guys want to call the pig hutch. <laughs> We're looking forward to seeing what that winds up being called. So you had a good week this week. Yes. You were busy. So actually you had a project that uh, you worked on with one of the, with one of the chicken tractors. So you, I did. And every, nobody gets to see what that project was like. No, we had one of our tractors, the bottom two by four on one of the sides was split in two spots. So Dwayne wanted me to somehow try to like splint it or mm -hmm. no. That's a good term. Is it sandwich? Splint? Sandwich the, splint. yeah, one by fours on each side of it. So I did do that, but I had to use my feet for my extra hands <laughs> <laughs> because it was hard to try to glue a six foot board, hold it up there and try to clamp it all at the same time. So right. I didn't film it just because I had no idea what I was doing mm -hmm. and, um, I was on the ground using my feet to hold these boards and try to get the clamp and so it was pretty funny. So I would say, it's only my opinion, but I would say that would be fun to watch. I would have enjoyed watching it. <laughs> I think you guys probably would have too. You would have laughed at me. I would have. And I told her, I'm like, you know, you can always edit it right out. In fact, if you delete, if it was that bad, you just delete it. Nobody would ever know. So next time around, you're gonna have to make sure. Next time I'll do it. Yeah, you've got all these products. She did a great job, you guys. I mean, that thing is perfectly sandwiched in there. Uh, and we took it off today. It's not coming apart at all. And I mean, it's, it's probably better than new. So, but you got some power tool time. Your impact wrench skills, we're gonna have to work on our impact wrench skills. She just used the drill driver for everything. 
Um, but uh, you, you worked with the impact wrench today. I think we got some footage of you with the impact wrench today. Okay, so you have to push. You're gonna be pushing in pretty hard. It's gonna make noises and it's okay. What size screw did you get? Two and a half. Really? What you told me. It's gotta be something blocking it. No, there's actually not anything blocking it. That's the noise it makes when it does the impact. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, uh, yeah, no. That's just the noise it's making for the impact. You're fine. It's not going in for me though. Just, just push in hard and then keep pushing down. There you go, sweetie. Like that, you I'm are. All, like twisted doing it. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so she's learning the tools, and Yimmy, you, you got woodworking done this week on your own. It was awesome. <laughs> I did the circular saw. That was the first time I've ever used it. Yeah, I know. I'm I'm glad you didn't cut anything off. That would yeah. have been awkward. So that was interesting. Yeah. If this is the first time you joined us. This is actually our weekly vlog. This is where we spend some time with everybody to give you an update on what's going on here on the farm. We're going into our busy season, so we have a lot of planting to do. By the way, if you guys are here in Arizona, it is fall. It is prime, premier planting season. We got cooler weather coming in this week. We're gonna take advantage of that early time to get some planting done. You guys should as well. So definitely wanna do that. But if you're not a subscriber, we'd love to have you here and share the content. Definitely helps us here when you share the content. And our Amazon shop, I'll leave a link down below. That is a free, painless way to help support the channel. If you start with that link, it doesn't matter what you buy, you help to support us here. So just wanna thank you for joining us today and remind you, if we can farm on the edge of nowhere, so can you. This is legit children of the corn. Like, I'm expecting Malachi to jump out. Or a freaking snake. <laughs>